Good morning. Hello. Good morning. How are you doing there, Kelly? Hello. We're good. 8 a.m. <laughs> We're still half asleep. <laughs> what? We're still half asleep. I'm sorry. No, no, we're not. I'm not. I'm not. I've been awake for eight. No. I'm, very excited. I'm good. I live in Texas, so same time. Oh, yeah. That's Steve. Uh, we're Steve and Bob from the UK and USA. Oh, okay. Every, so everywhere. Yeah. But Texas yeah, is Texas. Um, Corpus Christi. Oh, okay. I'm in Dallas. The oil country. Oh. Yeah, while it's morning for you guys, it's kind of 11 p.m. for me, so... Yeah. <laughs> <It's> quite... <late. laughs> well, we'll get through this, and then you can go to sleep. How about that? <laughs> I don't want to go good. for a... Oh, I'd man, like to go back to sleep, too. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Jason. No one will be missing you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, man. <laughs> Oh man, so uh so when are we getting this show on the road then? Uh just waiting for Jackson and uh we'll get started. Tumbleweed. <laughs> what do you guys want to chat about? There's an, actually a band called Tumbleweed in Australia if you just want to know. Uh, yeah, we we want to chat to you, Kelly, about your uh work and Video, podcast, and that sort of thing. Okay. Yeah. We've been wanting to chat to you for a long time. <laughs> I've, I've been traveling so much. It's, it's difficult. I don't really care. Um, carry, you know, audio kind of equipment with me to, to do it in hotels because it's just too much. And I don't like to check my bags. Oh, yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> That's cool. Uh oh, let me close my noise making. Let me get the camera ready. Just like all of them. Are, are we just doing audio or video too? Uh, audio. Okay, that's what I thought. Audio. 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 So, how long has the show been on? How long has it been on for? Yeah. About two years. Yeah, okay. That's. I think the I've been I've been hearing your name since then. What tech the podcast name? Yeah, yeah, I've been seeing oh. it around and emailed. Oh, like that. oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I've actually emailed you a few times if you remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, we're trying to get. Do you speak to Kevin Rose at all, Kelly? Yeah, we chat. Well, I mean, we chat when when necessary. Oh dear. Okay. Yeah, we're trying to get him on this show as well. If if he can. Uh, uh, if you can point him to this in this direction, if you can. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I, I, we don't like. You know, we we chat when when we're there with you know in person and stuff. Uh, but I I don't I don't I mean I don't know that I have you know any sway on on uh, getting them on shows. Uh, uh, um, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. No, that's cool. No, that's all. Uh, sorry, that's all good. That's good. I just thought you might better just put in a good word for us, but. I will try. How about that? That's cool. Because <laughs> we've we've had we've had a, like Robert Scoble on and um, yeah yeah. Uh, uh, what's her name? Harmony Way. She's been on. Hey, uh, okay. Cal, have you have you have you spoken to uh, um, John Rattinger and uh, a few of the other Techno Buffalo guys before? I think so. Um... Because they've just recently migrated to a uh, to a uh, revision three, haven't they? Yeah, yeah, okay. So, yeah, I actually um, met one of them in person recently, um, and I, I saw that they they connected with the uh, with revision three. Oh, Are you right. Trying to them on as well? No, no, it's 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 uh, it's just I watch um, John Rettinger, Soldier Who's Best, yeah. and Noah. I I always yeah. watch these guys. They they've got some really good content. I love the content. Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah, so professionally get... done as well. Exactly, and right. which is obviously why Revision Three picked them up. <laughs> um, yeah. Hey, uh, yeah, they they were very excited. Uh, we chatted before before they uh, made the switch, so uh, I think they were really excited. Yeah, yeah. I mean. Uh, 
it's the, the, they've they've been a long way. They've been a very long way. Like yeah. uh, they've been doing it for, for like years now. So I remember when John Rettinger was first starting out. Yeah. And um, every every video is like uh, <laughs> his intro was always you know <laughs> that same intro ever since he started. What's up, oh, wow. everybody? John Rettinger. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I also heard it's a cool. room. It's cool to see people go, you know, continue yeah. to change yeah. or not change. Yeah. I also heard a rumor that uh, you wear a Wonder Woman costume or something like that. <laughs> no, that's what somebody put in the chat. <laughs> uh, nice. <laughs> hey, somebody sent me, sent me a link to the uh, chat room. Is that correct? Is it? Uh, no, <laughs> it's not. That's what somebody <laughs> put in the <laughs> chat. <laughs> no, I no, know, boys. No, it says, uh, it says, uh, it says, uh, it says John wears a Batman no, suit and, uh, oh, sorry. Oh, okay. I figured you maybe you wore it for uh, Halloween, but I guess not. <laughs> All right. Hold on, guys. Sorry. Yeah. Just because it's somebody's dream doesn't mean it's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. It won't let me mute uh, the ad. Uh, yeah, it's cool. Just let it play and then it'll be finished. Alright, there we go. Huh. So here we got Bob and... And Steve? Steve. Alright. <clears throat> Ready when you are, bud? Alright, mate. <clears throat> Do it. So, is there some questions we can't ask you, Kelly, or you open to any questions to do with what you do and stuff? Yeah, I mean, there shouldn't be anything off off topic. I mean, just you know. Uh, feel free to ask whatever if there's something which I can't imagine what it would be I'll just tell you alright cool sounds good alright here alright here we go and hit record this podcast is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network if it's tech it's here Listen to other great tech podcasts at www.techpodcasts.com. Welcome to Tech Webcast, Australia's leading technology show. Download our iPhone app at www.techwebcast.info. Welcome to episode 137 of the Tech Webcast podcast, recorded on Friday the 8th of July 2011. Tech Webcast is recorded live every Saturday and occasionally Friday, and rebroadcast on the Aussie Tech Heads on Thursday nights at 7. Upcoming news stories later in the show. Hackers targeting popular sites such as Facebook with malware. Facebook now comes with an extra faces after rolling out video calling feature with Skype, and nine reasons why you need at least a two gigabit gigabyte plan. Today's hosts are Brad, Jason, Bob, and Steve with special guest Kelly Lewis. How are you doing, Brad? Hey, Jason. How are you, mate? Pretty good. Got a bit of a cold, but I'm here, so that's the main thing. We <laughs> don't miss out on this show. No, I agree, mate. We cannot miss out on this show. Um, what's been happening? What's been happening? Been getting busy with the new tech webcast application for iPhone and iPad. Okay. I've been using that as well. It looks uh, pretty good. Looks great. Yeah, this one's going to be universal and uh, 99 cents US or $1.19 Australian because they've got the extra tax for being in Australia. <laughs> cool, cool. Now, can we talk about the interview that we did with the uh, with that person the other day? Or? Yeah, with Ali Coyne. We had an interview uh, for the Tech IT Journal website and uh, we'll be able to check that out later. It's been put onto our sites, both bradsblog.org and jasonoakley.me and she discussed the, the show and the application and the history of the show. Yeah, it was a quite interesting show. Um, it was good, good, uh, good chatting with her. 
Yeah, nice interview there. And uh, yeah, uh, and also we have Steve from Chatterbox Live. Hey, Steve. Hey, how you doing, uh, Brad? Good to have you on, mate. And also we have Bob from uh, Tech Luster. What's up, Bob? Hello, Brad. How you going, mate? I'm not too bad, dude. How are you? Good, mate. Good. And uh, also we have Kelly Lewis. Hey, guys. Hey. Hey, how are hey you? Kelly. Welcome to the hey. show. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. <laughs> All right. Is there early morning recording this one for us? What time is it where you are? Oh, it's 5 o'clock p.m. That's, oh, that's not too bad, Ben. All right. I no, not at all. We're keeping you out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> I think we tried to schedule it so that uh, everybody would be happy. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy about the time. That's good. Um, so all right, let's talk about what you do. So what do you do, Kelly, on the internet for people uh, who's not up to... Uh, I talk tech. So I have a show called Geek Beat TV. I've been doing online technology shows since 2005. Um, and Geek Beat TV is a five-minute-ish video uh, where I, I discuss new technologies, new gadgets that are coming out. It's very quick, a lot of information packed into the one episode. And I release that several times a week. And then um, I also have Geek Beat Live, which is my live version of the show. I have a co-host for that, John P. And we get to talk it more in depth because I can't really say too much in five minutes. So we get more in depth on the live show. And, and we go for an hour to an hour and a half. Um, and uh, within, you know, out, outside of that, I, I do a lot of uh, technology uh, sections on CNN and Fox and Sirius Radio. So wow. I uh, I like to, to talk tech with everybody and oh. and have fun with it. All right, Ellie's what everywhere. Ha what happened with uh, Geek uh, Brief? Yeah, yeah Geek, Geek Brief. What happened with that show? Why did it close down and that sort of thing? Well, you know, sometimes uh, business decisions uh, need you know come come in such a way that uh, you need to make changes. Yep. And uh, so last year we did um, we did make a change and uh, rebranded and um, the old show is is just that it's it's done and the new show is Geek Beat TV. So which name do you like better? <laughs> well, you know, both are both are my babies, so it's kind of hard to say. <laughs> but I, I do I I think the uh, the beat kind of uh, kind of gets people. Kind of tell people what it is. It's like a news beat, you know. Yeah. Um, and so I think people understand what it is right away. I guess right, as long cool, as you put cool. geek in there, that's all that matters. Stay <laughs> <laughs> right. good point. Good point. All right. So Jason got some questions for you, Kelly. So uh, fire away. Yeah. So the um, geek beat is on revision three. Yeah. Love those how long guys. have you been with uh, revision three now? Um, about a year. It's amazing. So we've been together about a year, and um, you know they are top notch in the industry. Uh, they've got all all the biggest shows, Tech Nation. They've got Techzilla, um, and they're they're constantly re recruiting um, other great shows. And so it's a it's a good good family to be a part of. We await the day when they give us the call. <laughs> <laughs> get an Australian flavor in there. <laughs> yes, exactly. We'll get on to Kevin about that. So uh, <laughs> tell us a bit about uh, Open Camp and how that got started as well. Okay, so uh, Open Camp is a conference that um, John P. and I have organized. Um, we organized it last year. It, it started out three years ago, really. Um, a lot of people in the geek community are familiar with word camps or... Drupal camps. Uh, these are CMS platform specific. Like for if you have a website and you use WordPress um, to manage that site and put all the content up. Um, and these, there are all of these throughout the country and throughout the world. Um, these conferences that deal specifically with that platform, WordPress or Drupal or Joomla. And um, we've been um, organizing those in the Dallas community for a couple of years. And last year, we just we were like, you know, it doesn't make sense that we're platform specific. It doesn't make sense that we aren't kind of gr grouping it together. You know, every blogger, regardless of what size of blog you have, regardless of what platform you use, regardless of the topic of choice, you really, you, you need some additional information. You need to know how to make money at it. 
you need to know how to do SEO properly. You, you know, there are all these general topics that, that they cover on all of the different conferences. And so we decided to do Open Camp, where we gather everyone together. And we had, um, we had part of the conference that focused on those general topics, and then part of the conference that split out the platform so that you could learn more about the specific platform that you wanted to use more in depth. And so it worked really, really well. Everyone was super excited, super happy. We had uh, 600 attendees, 60 speakers, oh. and uh, we had the, the U.S. Army Golden Knights come in. They are the parachute team, and I know that you guys are in Australia, but you may have seen them. Um, uh, they, they fly into any of our, our major sporting events. Uh, they parachute in. And this is a group of the Army that are just amazing. It, it, they have such skill. Um, they can fly out of a plane, parachute down, and land on a very specific X spot. You know, the X marks the spot. They land there. They're not landing two feet over. They're not landing two inches over. They land right there. You know, they're just so skilled. It's amazing. And uh, they use that um, in, in war and everything. But um, so they came in. They, they threw some of our speakers out of the plane <laughs> doing tandem jumps. <laughs> and uh, it was my first time skydiving. It was probably the most incredible experience I've ever had. <laughs> Pretty scary. <laughs> no, not scary at all. I was, I was way excited. <laughs> <laughs> did you get exactly. that film? Oh yeah, I actually did an interview in the sky. Um, oh. I had a contour camera and uh, had it taped in my glove, um, <laughs> and so I kind of pointed my arm back at me and and the guy um, that I was tandem jumping with, and we did an interview. And you know, it's people think it's scary, and it. it it is for a lot of people right when they jump. Yep. But when when you're in the air, if you're able to just actually take in what's happening, it's, it's a very surreal, very uh, amazing experience because you see the entire world. You're, 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 you're floating in the middle of the air, you know. Um, and it, a lot of um, people who skydive are actually say that they used to be scared of uh, of heights and, and that helped them get over it. So it, it's pretty cool. If you ever get the chance to do it, do it. You haven't tried it. Don't, kill, don't blame me if you hurt yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever tried bungee jumping? No, that, that I will not try. Um, right. <laughs> that, that actually scares me a little bit given the um, the snapping that ha effect that happens. Yep. Um, I and I'm a very adventurous person, but bungee jumping is just the one thing that kind of irks me. Yeah, when I want to feel like you're on the end of a whip getting. Yeah, like, I don't really <laughs> want to just bam, <laughs> <laughs> whiplash and all of that good stuff. I got a question. And I see, I see you also went on a big trip not that long ago. I've been traveling constantly. Um, a whirlwind of activity over the last two two and a half months. Um, I went to LA, to San Francisco, to Orlando, to Seattle, to New York, to LA again, um, and I think a few other places in there. And uh, I was doing a, a bunch of different things um, in New York. We were live streaming the CEA line shows. This is an event that's put on by the same people as the CES, which is the biggest gadget event of the year. Um, yeah. And so this is a smaller trade-only event, uh, but we went in, we took our entire studio, and <laughs> actually we um, outfitted a trailer that held all of our equipment with our logos and pictures and everything, and that was driven across the country by John P. and Norm, one of our, our producers, and to take all of the stuff from Dallas to New York. We live-streamed the entire event, had all of the exhibitors showing us the new, their new gadgets, their new technology, and uh, it was fantastic. It was a great way to do this kind of event because, you know, you just you kind of sit in one place and everything happens there. They come to you and um, people watching. Chicky is in uh, the chat room here. She was uh, paying attention to our chat room and our, our live-stream coverage uh, in New York. And, uh, so that was a lot of fun. Hopefully we get to do that again. And I also went to Seattle, got to see the Boeing facility. 
Good stuff. Um, nice. And yeah, I mean that. If you talk tech, I mean that is just amazing. It's you also amazing. went to Australia too. Is that correct for this uh, oh, TV show? Yeah. Is that the one, the one you met? Um, yeah, that was a couple of years ago. So for yeah. the um, world's best job campaign that Queensland put on. Yeah, oh, um, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I was the American candidate, the final American candidate, and um, we they brought. 11 of us down there uh, to Australia to have our final contest. Um, we did all sorts of things from blogging to doing video to, um, you know, doing tests like swimming. <laughs> and, <laughs> you should have won that. Um, yeah. uh, you know, I was, I, I, it, I, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed the experience. I would have thoroughly enjoyed having won, but, you know, Life takes you in different directions at different forks in the road, and I'm thrilled that I chose that I that I've gone down the path that I have, and um, I, I definitely want to get back to Australia. Definitely, uh, Melbourne or Sydney or what, what? What? What's the next place? You know, I did not get to see Sydney. I, I flew through Sydney. Yeah, on Sydney. Call, <laughs> but <laughs> I didn't get to Sydney's see it. Sydney's better than so Melbourne anyway. <laughs> has been what? Sydney's better than Melbourne anyway. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Don't it's, 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 it's very yeah. hostile around that area. Oh. <laughs> yeah, what a, uh, well, I definitely want to see Sydney. Um, in, in Melbourne, the, um, the koala bear, like the, the koala bark. and kangaroo, yep. um, what's that called? Kangaroo? No, the, like the, <laughs> <laughs> there's a, um, like a, a, a facility where they have oh. them and you can feed them and everything. Um, oh, okay, I'm not sure what that's called. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, God my, to my zoo. Oh, yeah, zoo, the zoo, yeah, they can do that. Yeah. The zoo, yeah, yeah. Zoo. Is it just a zoo? Okay. Um, it has different animals than we have here. <laughs> and, um, in, in Sydney, you're not allowed to hold on. She rides in your Did you know that, Kelly? I did not know that. Did I did not get to ride a kangaroo. That's actually <laughs> <laughs> I had a quick question for Callie. Um, what, what, what started you in uh, podcasting? What got me started? Yeah. Um, to do something other than what I was doing. And um, at the time, you know, we were very excited about the possibilities and the technology behind podcasting. And, um, it was just after we released the first episode just after um, Apple had released their first video iPod. So it was pretty obvious that video was where it was going to be and there were no, there really wasn't anybody doing video. There were a few shows out there at the time um, and it, it kind of took off. Um, <laughs> so it, it was really just about getting back into something that I loved which was technology um, taking advantage of the new technology that was, that was there and um, kind of finding some passion. Oh, thanks. So Bob's got some questions for you, Kelly. So uh, far away, Bob. Yeah, these are uh, questions um, from uh, Dylan Combs. You may have heard of them. You may not yeah, have heard of them. Of yeah. yeah, Dylan Combs. Um, he said uh, that... It, it, he unfortunately had to had to go back to work or something because you know work was really tight over there or something I don't know but he left me with these questions for you. Um, okay. First one is if you had to choose one moment as the highlight of your tech podcasting career, what would it be? Oh God, that is so difficult because I've done I mean, five, over five years like. 12, 1,300 videos. Um, <laughs> oh, it's, so, it's, like, it's like picking, you know, the fa your favorite move moment with your with one of your kids when you have four of them. You know, I, <laughs> I have had some incredible experiences. Um, these aren't going, if I had time to think about that, I, I would probably come up with something better. But, you know, um, I, I think just generally speaking, getting to do the stuff that I get to do is not 
normal by any means. And I, I appreciate that and I understand it and I'm so thankful to be able to do it. Things like the skydiving, things like you know, going, um, meeting and becoming friends with the house of, the producer of the TV show House, um, getting to see them shoot an episode, you know, getting to go to the Boeing facility and fly on a brand new American Airlines plane that hasn't been flown anywhere else, um, getting, getting inside looks at Knox and, you know, all of these different tech types of adventures that I've been on. And oh, yeah. you know, I'm just I'm just so thankful that my life is what it is, um, and that I get to share it with everybody because that anytime I do something, I don't I don't ever experience it just for myself. I'm experiencing it for the world essentially. And that may sound uh, pretentious or something. I, I don't mean it that way. I just mean that I, I want to give other other people the opportunities to experience what I get to experience because it's it's amazing. Yeah, I, I'm so jealous right now. Can you stop? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I guess. Okay, uh, so the the second question he's got written down for you is: uh, What's your predictions for the future of PCs? As in, are we headed towards mostly mobile world? Will the desktop die in the next ten, twenty years? You know, I think we're, we're definitely seeing um, movements towards the smaller PCs, uh, which are becoming very mobile. Um, so I, I don't think, no, I, I don't, don't really think that, you know, desktops will die. They will become more um, for people who need specific, very heavy processing types of applications. Um, yeah, absolutely. Like, for example... My editors, they're never going to be editing or for a very long time. They will not be editing on a phone or a tablet. That's just <laughs> not, the processing power is not there. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it won't be for a very long time, no matter how much stride that we've been making so far, um, which, which we have been making great strides in, in that department, but it's just, yeah. it has so far to go. So, we yeah, are getting there, though. Yeah, we are getting there, um, but the majority of users are going uh, will be using smaller, more lightweight, more portable devices um, like tablets or um, you know Chromebooks or net netbooks, whatever term you want to throw in there. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, we, so we we certainly are. You can't deny that. He's got he's got another tablet based question, sort of mobile. Um, <laughs> type question. He says, uh, what's your opinion on WebOS for tablets? If more developers pay attention to it, could it be a good competitor to iOS and Android? Um, I think a little, I, I like WebOS. Um, I don't think it has quite the, the potential as, you know, Android and, and iOS have, have shown themselves to have. Um, yeah. And primarily, he's right, that it is because the developers don't focus on it. It's because the yeah. user base isn't focusing on it. Definitely, um, yeah. But I think it also has some, some hurdles to overcome come as well. I've seen some um, in um, some issues with, you know, people figuring it out, intuitive um, issues. So, yeah. Uh, I think it, it could have potential, but it, it's not showing itself just yet. Yeah, and he said, um, he said, what's your favorite podcast to watch or listen to? Please say Tech Webcast. <laughs> <laughs> you know, to be honest, I hate to say it, but I, I don't have the time very much to watch other people's shows as much as I want to and as much as I try, like I subscribe to all their stuff and I sit there and, and try and watch this like uh, the majority of everything going on in this industry and it's so difficult because because Livid Lobster, my com our, our company here um, has grown so exponentially in the last year and we're doing so many different things that my time has just become uh, so drained, you know. 
But yeah. I, I look forward to the day that I can sit down and watch other content because it's not good to just focus on your own stuff because that there yeah. there are bad things that come out of that, you know. It's it's good to get it's good to get a second opinion on everything. A nice try, Steve. You can point to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> he was going there. He was pointing to himself directly when I said, "What is Yeah, that was podcast. me. <laughs> I admit it. <laughs> the box uh, I do agree. It's a great. It's a great podcast, but tech webcast is better. Uh, <laughs> now, Steve's got some questions for you. Yeah, I got Steve. a few more questions. Um, what is your probably your all time favorite gadget that uh, you've either reviewed or used yourself? The keypad, of course. No, I'm just joking. What was that? Do you, do you guys know what the keypad was? Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, the no. keypad was this old. It was like the first like um, barcode scanner, and it was in the form <laughs> of a cat. It actually looked like a cat. Anyway, oh, that was a complete <laughs> joke. That was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was in the. I think it was in the nineties, and it was. It didn't really work that well, but it was all the rage anyway. Um, <laughs> you know, I think some of my my favorite products. This is. Um, it started out consumer, and it, it has. Um, it has very. Um, enterprise. Oh, sorry, enterprise appeal as well now. But the Drobo started out as one of my favorite products that I've come across because personally I deal with so much um, video, files, pictures, images, and all of that that I needed um, that I needed something a, a gadget to be able to help me take care of all of that. And the Drobo does that. It's basically a storage robot, if you will. You know, it, it takes care of your stuff. It does raid without you knowing what rate it is and um it's it's been one of my favorite products that i've ever had because it's helped me personally so much um yeah. what is and uh, yeah go ahead oh yeah i had another question um uh, do you have any advice to any uh, new podcasters or bloggers out there that are uh, getting started or want to um increase their viewership or expand their horizons or like us yeah, like yeah, you know, some tips would be good. So, so obviously, you've got to do something that you love. That you've got to talk about a topic that you um, have passion about, that you can talk about for years on end if it goes that way. And so, you don't want to just wind up, you know, going going with a topic that has. Excuse me, <laughs> I'm getting over a call. <laughs> um, <laughs> That, that has limited supply. Um, you have to, when, when you're looking at audience, unfortunately, the only thing I can say is that you have to put out great content. You have to do your very best and strive for perfection, even though it won't be perfect. Um, you have to outwork everybody else. You have to outperform everybody else. Um, and you can't even focus on getting an audience, really, or getting sponsorship to pay you for all that time until you have great content that people want to watch. Then, once you have the great content, then you can start looking for audience uh, audience members. Um, and, and that is a tricky business. Um, the, the great thing about podcasting and online video is that anybody can do it. The problem with it is that everybody does it. <laughs> So, um, you what really have to set, yes, there's a ton of competition out there, and you have to set yourself apart. Um, and, the, you know, even if you set yourself apart, that's no guarantee that people will find you. Uh, and keep in mind that people's attention spans are um, very short. Uh, <laughs> yes, they are. And so, video versus audio you know, you look at longer form video. I mean, our Geek Beat Live is longer form video. So when I say that attention spans are short, I'm not saying that you only do short form productions, but you kind of have to adjust within that knowledge, you know. Um, and when Geek Beat Live gets a lot of viewers, but they may not all watch the whole thing, you know. So you can, you have to realize that and, and, and pick and choose where your focus is. Um, 
but you also have to be everywhere. Um, pe people these days do not want you to tell them how to watch you. You know, if they're going to watch you, they're going to watch how they want, where they want, when they want. And so you have to be available on YouTube. You have to be available on iTunes. You have to be available on um, Vimeo, Vidler. Uh, you have to be available on Timo if you can. You know, you, know yes. you, you have to move yourself in the direction so that anybody can find you anywhere that they are already paying attention to stuff. So getting your, getting your stuff in front of, uh, in front of the audience is, is the big question, right? And um, sure. it's different for everybody, unfortunately. So look at what other people are doing. Um, there's nothing wrong with copying um, models, um, but that doesn't mean that it's going to work for you. So you have to look at why that worked for them you know, and, and adjust accordingly for your audience, for your target market, and all of that stuff. So it is a lot of adjusting and playing with and learning from mistakes. Cool. And you just got to be willing to do it. All right. I've, I've got a question for you, Kelly. Do you have an uh, iPhone app or an iPad app for your show? Yeah. Um, it's called the Kali app cool. on iPhone. All right. And it's also on Android. Although I think if you search the market, it's just Kali Lewis rather than Cali app. All right, cool. All right, so Jason's got some tech news. Uh, Jason? Yeah, I'll just take a quick rundown of news. Cool. All it can take is one click on a link posted by a Facebook friend and you're infected with malicious and dangerous software. The infection will sit quietly and patiently, gleaning your passwords as you go about logging onto your bank accounts and social networking profiles looking to steal your identity and your money. Malicious software or malware infections are nothing new in the online world but they are becoming more sophisticated according to a new report. The 2011 Mid-Year Security Report by a web security provider said criminal organizations operating malware networks were increasingly targeting popular and trusted websites. An internet user visiting a more popular website or search engine can be infected by clicking on an ad known as malvertising, the second most common form of malware delivery before search engine poisoning. Crooks were also targeting social network sites, making login details a valuable commodity among malware operators, said Greg Singh, Systems Engineer Manager of Security Provider Bluecoat. Big on the heels of Google's launch of its latest networking venture, Facebook has told its 750 million users they'll now be able to make video calls on the site. The feature will be powered by internet phone service Skype, bought by Microsoft for $8.5 billion earlier this year. Microsoft also owns a small stake in Facebook. Facebook also redesigned its chat features so people are user messages most often show up first. To make video calls, Facebook users with webcam and quick computers have to select the friends they want to chat with. In the chat window that pops up, clicking on a small blue video icon brings up the video chat feature. Currently there is no option to video chat more than one person. That feature is available on Google+, a social service that Google began testing last week with a small number of invited users. Facebook is also adding group chat option. This works pretty much the same way as the Google group chat option on Google+. Once you're chatting with one friend, you can click on an icon to add more to the conversation. And nine reasons why you need at least a two gigabyte plan. Uh, if you have a mobile phone with monthly limit on how much data you can use, here are some tips on what types of phone use will gobble up your precious megabytes. Streaming video and teleconferencing, the biggest offender. One minute of YouTube quality video eats up two megabytes. If you're on a plan that gives you 200 megs a month, you can't even watch Lady Gaga's telephone video once per day. Streaming audio, second biggest offender and potentially more serious. While video is something we need to see to enjoy, internet radio is more of an accompaniment for other activities such as jogging or doing dishes. This means people like to keep it on for hours. Audio consumes about a quarter of the data that video does, but 10 minutes a day will break your bank if you're on a 200 meg plan. One hour a day of Pandora consumes nearly a gigabyte, which you can't afford if you're on the two gig plan and don't use other data hogging apps. Photos. If you're a real shutter bug, photos can consume significant amounts of data. Sending and viewing photos both count towards your monthly limit. Posting 10 photos a day eats up the most of a 200 meg plan. Maps. Navigation maps consume lots of data when they retrieve map images up to a megabyte a minute. Web surfing. Web pages vary wildly in size, so this is 
will depend quite a bit on whether you like to visit graphically rich sites, lots of data, or spare text-oriented ones, less data. Facebook, roughly equivalent to web surfing, status updates won't take much data, but sending photos and viewing friends' pictures will. Email, most emails are tiny in terms of data. Basically, you can send and re 